powering backpacks. We're getting ready for a test. And we're doing six five number two. Which one? A or B? What? I was thinking one or the other. Alright, let's do number one. Okay. So number one is this. And we're doing our tests of symmetry. So those will be in our notes. Remember I said you don't have to memorize them. If you need them, I will give them to you. So in my notes here. And remember these tests of symmetry are an either or, not a both. Okay? So we only have each each um, thing, x-axis, y-axis, origin, has two checks, and only one of them has to work. So if the first one is a yes, then you're good to go. If the first one is a no, then you got to try the second one, right? Okay, so here we go. We're doing a test. This is our equation, right? And I'm testing it for symmetry about the x-axis. So the first one says, replace it with a, these are the same, but replace it with a negative theta. Well, this is a good one to start with, because what do I know about cosine? Cosine is even. What does that mean? When you take the cosine of a negative, it just disappears. So this is the same as this? Well, that's the same as the original equation, right? So is this symmetric about the x-axis? Yes, why are you all sitting there like you're stunned? This is, so, so that's a yes, so we're good. So we've got symmetry about the x-axis. Now, I also need y-axis and origin. So y-axis, that test tells me to put in a negative r and a negative theta. Now, this one is not going to come out because we just talked about what happens to that negative right there. That disappears. When you take the cosine of a negative, it disappears. The cosine is an even function. Is that equation the same as the original? No. But that doesn't mean I don't have symmetry. It just means I have to try the other one for the y-axis, which says leave r alone, but replace theta with pi minus theta. Now, you're going to want to be sure you have your color sheet on test day unless you have your formulas memorized, because don't we need our u minus d formula for this? So I'm going to figure out what this is right here, so I'm going to get down here. So cosine pi minus theta is cosine pi cosine theta. Now this is coming right off my color sheet, which I have memorized. If you don't have it memorized, then you have to have your color sheet with you. I won't be providing them, David. David, put it back. You're supposed to have one. Where's yours? I don't know. Okay, well, you don't get any more. That's it. No, you can have that one. You can have that one, but you don't get to go get one on test day. Take care of your stuff. So cosine pi, cosine theta, plus sine pi, sine theta. Now, I need to put in the values for cosine pi and sine pi. So I remember that pi is over here. So what's the cosine of pi? Negative 1. So this is negative cosine. What's the sine of pi? 0. So that just comes out to be negative cosine theta. So my equation now looks like well, it's going to be negative cosine theta. Is that equation the same as the original one? No. no. So therefore, since both tests 
for the y-axis fail, I do not have symmetry about the y-axis. So I had it about x, I don't have it about y. All right, now I need the origin. So, plugging in, substituting in for the origin, that test is negative r theta. So negative r equals one plus two cosine theta. This is a test for the origin. Is that the same as the original? Is that the same as that? Nope. So I'm going to the second one, which says leave r alone, but put in theta plus y for theta. All right, well, I'm right back to where I was a minute ago. I gotta figure out what this is. So I'll do it down here. Cosine theta plus pi is cosine theta, cosine pi, minus sine theta, sine pi. All right, here we go. Uh, cosine pi, oh, I erased it, but we just did it. Cosine pi is? Negative one. negative one, so this is negative cosine, negative one cosine. Sine pi is zero. zero. So basically that just equals negative cosine, so one minus two cosine theta. Negative two times negative cosine, so negative two cosine. Is that the same as the original equation? No. Yep. So the only thing that one has symmetry about is the x-axis. And you would do the second problem exactly the same way, except it's a different equation. Right? Okay. All right. Seth? I'm a bit confused on why the negative uh, theta doesn't work for cosine. So can't cosine be negative? Cosine can be negative, but the cosine of a negative, the cosine of negative theta is the same as cosine theta. If you think about it, the cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2. The cosine of negative 30 is also root 3 over 2. It's an even function. It has symmetry about the y-axis. In other words, the sign of the input does not affect the sign of the output, or does not change the sign of the output. Sign is the opposite. Sign does change. So if you took the sign of an negative, it would be negative. It would be negative. Alana? Right. So uh, when we're like doing sign, we just move the, it, uh, we just move it to the like a sign, uh, a negative sign to the front. If you take the sign of a negative, yes, it becomes negative sign as an odd function. All right, who else has a homework question? Sticking with homework, Charles? Uh, question three, six, five. Six, five, number three. Find the minimum R value for R equals two plus three cosine theta. Okay, in this equation, like all equations, there's an independent variable and there's a dependent variable. Right, think about it like if this equation were y equals 4x plus 2, right? x is the independent variable because the value of x is going to determine the value of y, correct? So in this problem, the value of theta is going to determine the value of r. r. Theta is your independent variable, right? So r is going to depend on theta. Well, tell me about cosine theta. What, I'm looking for a minimum, what is the smallest value that cosine theta can have? Zero. No. Negative one. Negative one. Cosine theta, guys, you cannot forget your curves. What's the lowest, smallest value that cosine can have? Negative one, right? So no matter what, 
this number is going to be negative one or bigger. It also has a maximum, by the way, but there's a minimum here. So negative one or bigger. So if the smallest this can be is negative one, then what does that tell you about the smallest r can be? Remember, r depends on theta. So if the smallest cosine can be is negative one, then the smallest r can be is negative one. Now, unfortunately, what some of you did, I think, and it's, it's understandable, some of you saw the word minimum, got on your graphing calculator, and looked for the lowest point on the graph. Well, stop. That works if you're in a rectangular system, because minimum would be low, right, in a rectangular system, but you're not in a rectangular system. Do you see what I'm saying? So what you did was not right, okay? It's, it's okay if you have x's and y's. That would be great in x's and y's, but not with r and theta. All right, while we're at it, what's the maximum on a value in this problem? One, two, one, five. Well, the maximum cosine value is one, so the maximum r value would be five. If you built a t chart, you get a whole bunch of numbers over here for r, the smallest one would be negative one, and the biggest one would be five. And everything else is something in between. Okay, do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. All right, another homework question. Sticking with homework on the whole chapter. This test is over the whole chapter. Colin. 7A on 6 1. 6 1. 7 A. Okay, this was also on your quiz. So I'm not going to read you the quiz question. This is exactly the same. So if you miss the airplane flying in the air problem with the wind blowing at you, um, pay attention here because this is exactly the same problem with just different numbers. All right, so this is 6-1, number 7. The issue here for all of, anybody who does this, the issue is almost always that you mess up your angle. Because obviously in order to get the right answer, I gotta get the right angle. So you have to pay really close attention uh, to what angle we need. So here's our airplane and he's flying on a heading of 340 degrees. So we have to remember what that looks like. 340 degrees as a compass bearing is this, isn't it? Isn't that 340 degrees? But when you start finding the components of that vector, you must use an angle in standard position. So the angle you're going to use when you say, okay, X equals and Y equals, when you set that up, the angle you have to use is the red one. So somehow we gotta figure out the red one. And there are lots of ways to do that, just using your common sense. If that's 340, how much is the spin in a one? 20. 20. 90 plus 20, would you say 110 for that red angle? So what was my speed or my velocity? Uh, 325, so x equals 325 cosine 110 and y equals 325 sine 110. All right, Colin, does that make sense to you? Yep. Those would be the components of the airplane. Now, we have the same thing with the wind. Um, actually, actually, let me stop. This is a two-part question. A says, find the component form of the airplane. That would be right here. So type this in on your calculator, make sure you're in degrees, and that X and Y would be it. Okay, that would be it for A. Now B says, okay, now we gotta factor in the wind. All right, so what's the wind here? Uh, the wind is blowing at 320 and its speed is 40. So here's the plane, here's the wind. 
just the components of the wind vector. That's all. It was just not the question. Make sure in degrees. Okay, so I've got 225 cosine 110 plus, I'm going to add my x's together column. So 325 cosine 110 plus 40 cosine 130 gives me a grand total of, this is the result we found, negative 136.87 and then 325 sine 110 plus 40 sine 130. I got 336.04. So these are the components of the resultant. In other words, this is how the plane is actually going. But the question wasn't find the components. The question was, how fast is he actually going and what direction is he actually going in? So if you think about this vector, it would look like this, negative 136.87 and 336.04. Wouldn't this be the direction he's actually going? So in order to figure that out, we're going to find this angle, and we'll do that by second tangent, 336.04 divided by 136.87. So this angle right here is 67.84. So how am I going to get his actual bearing now? I'm going to take 270. What's that? So his actual course is 337.84 degrees. Now, what's his actual speed? Well, this is his actual speed. The magnitude of the direction vector is going to be a speed. So 336.04 squared plus 136.87 squared and then square root it. So it's actually going 362.84 miles per hour. Okay, Colin, that makes sense? Okay, that was exactly like the airplane wind problem on your quiz. I mean, those are the steps that you go through. Now, on your quiz, one thing that was a little different is the way that I um, one of the one of the directions on the quiz, this is problem number five, was given as south 17 degrees west. So again, that's easy. South 17 degrees west means head south and you're 17 degrees to the west. on the quiz, number five. I think I'm looking at the right quiz. Yeah. Okay. Now, again, when you find it, this is the wind vector, when you find the components of the wind, the angle you got to use is this one. Right? Well, if that's 17, this is 73. So it would be 180 plus 73 or 253. All right, and so otherwise it's just like this. Okay? All right. Who else? What else in homework? Anything else? Any homework in the entire chapter? Uh, what 
one thing that we had a ton of people miss, um, let me find it real quick, is, oh yeah, on 6.3, number three. says we got these parametric equations and you're not allowed to graph them. Well, you're, you're going to graph them, but you can't use calculators. Alright? And it says T is between 0 and 5. Okay? <coughs> now, I know with the calculator you could do this in a snap. You have to do parametric mode, right? Mm -hmm. But you could do this easily. Um, without a calculator, you might want to change it into a rectangular system. And we've done that before. I'm not sure what order we did it when we did it before, but certainly we can divide those equations by two. And then we can square both sides of everything. Remember doing this? And then over here, we've got cosine squared plus sine squared, which is one. And over here, we have x squared over four plus y squared over four. And that's the same equation as x squared plus y squared equals four, if I multiply out the fraction. What is that the equation of? That's a circle. It's centered at the origin with a radius of two. And so what a lot of you did, a lot, probably most everybody, you drew this circle centered at the origin with a radius of two. Absolutely beautiful. But wrong. Why is it wrong? Um, why is it wrong, Hank? Um, because the max divided by t is pi, which is absolutely Exactly. Uh, the domain is zero to pi, kids. So that means that you go around zero to pi, but you gotta stop when you get to pi. Now, this would be absolutely perfect if we were going zero to two pi, right? Pay attention to the T's, or pay attention to everything. All right, another one that was missed is actually on the same homework, uh, 4B. 4B was missed by some people. Directions say, right as a Cartesian equation. Okay. So here is what I saw on some papers. And again, the thought is good. The thought is good. I had some people say, okay, if x is t squared, then t is the square root of x. And my equation is y equals the square root of x plus 1. Now, tell me what's wrong with that. It's, it's, it's a good thought, it's in the right direction, but what's wrong with it? Mm -hmm. Repeat that a second one, that's another good question. Exactly. When you take, if you decide you want to take the square root, then you've got to remember the plus or minus. Unless there is some compelling reason not to. For example, if you were doing a law sign or something and x was the side of a triangle, then I wouldn't need the negative one. But unless there's some really compelling reason not to use it, you've got to use it. If you decide to do this, then you got to put in the plus or minus. Otherwise, the strategy's fine. That's fine. Okay? I'm trying to close. 
one last I saw that was Miss Black People. Anybody have anything? Oh, I know. Here's one that was missed by a lot of people. Six, four, number three. So some got this right, but some missed it. So a lot missed it, actually. Let's talk about it. It says find all of the polar coordinates for this rectangular ordered pair. Now, we're not going to get overwhelmed. We're just going to just start simple. What are R and theta? For this x and y, x is 1, y is negative root 3. What is R? 2, boys and girls. If you don't know the Pythagorean theorem by now, there is no hope. Okay? It's 2. The hypotenuse is 2. How big is this reference angle here? 60? Oh wait, am I allowed to be in degrees? It doesn't say, so I'm gonna do it in degrees. So theta is not 60, theta is 300. So 2 comma 300 is the beginning. That is an R and a theta for that picture. Now, remember, that every angle has infinitely many coterminal angles. So instead of saying two comma 300, I could have said two comma negative 60 or two comma whatever, right? Lots and lots of possibility. So we'll say plus or minus 360N, N, where N is a whole number, okay? This, what this does is find all the possible angles that 300 matches up with. What's 300 minus 360? Negative 60. What's 300 plus 360? 660, right? All the coterminal angles. So this takes care of every possible polar coordinate pair if R is two. But remember, R could be negative two. There's no rule in polar coordinates that says R can, can't be negative. In polar form, if you're doing the CIS thing, if you're doing CIS, then it's gotta be positive. But when you're talking about an ordered pair, R can be negative. Well, what happens to my angle when I change the sign on R, it goes back 180 degrees. Well, one way, back or who cares? If I back up this 180 degrees, I'll be at 120, and I need all of his coterminal angles. So there is the correct answer. Now, you guys that are doing plus or minus 360N and not putting on this part, I'm going to lose points, because what in the heck is N? Where did N come from? If I'm just reading it, if I'm a guy out on the street, you hand me this, what's N? So make sure you include that, too. All right, so we know we missed that. Oh, we talked, I can't remember, maybe it was the other class. Remember, what does exact mean? The word exact means what? It means no calculator, right? It means do it by hand. So make sure that if it says exact, you are doing exact. Um, on 6-5, I didn't mark these wrong because the directions weren't very clear. But on number one, I want you to be specific when you label your spirals. So any equation you have, without a sine or cosine is going to be, or without a, any function, is going to be a spiral. So B, when it's four divided by theta, that's hyperbolic. So that's going to be a hyperbolic spiral. So in the future, make sure you distinguish. And then E, phi theta, that's going to be the spiral of Archimedes, or not Archimedes. There were a couple people that for letter D wrote cardioid. Now, that equation D, 
is the form of a cardioid family equation, but it's not a cardioid because why? The numbers don't match. Yep, the numbers don't match. So D is not a cardioid, it's a lima sign, just a lima sign. All right, I'll do one more homework thing and then we'll move on to something else. Um, 6, 5, 5A. Five 5A five is what shape? It's a lemniscate, right? So a lemniscate to figure eight. How long are the leaves? No, square root of 10. The leaves are the square root of 10, not 10. If you had a row, if the equation were r equal 10 sine 5 beta, something like that, that's a rose, and the leaves are 10 long. But as soon as you put that square on there, then this is not a rose anymore, it's a lemniscate, and r is the square root of 10. Right? Okay. All right, anything else? I don't haven't rated many six sixes yet because we just finished it. Um, so I'm not sure what you're gonna miss there. Yes, anything? Wake up. Wake up at 140? Spring back. Spring breaks there. Brooke? Oh no, sorry. Okay, let's uh, move on to any quizzes or any other papers I remember that. Any question about that? We already talked about number five. Anything about any of the rest of them that we need to review? say do it this way. I'm just going to say find it. Find the angle and what I want is angle C. So if I'm using a vector strategy, I need the vectors that come out from C. So I need vector CH and I need vector CF. Alright, so here we go. C to H would be 3, 4. Yep, 3, 4. Everybody okay with that? Vector CS would be negative 2, 12. So basically, instead of talking about the problem in terms of finding angle of the triangle, we're really now finding the angle between two vectors. And to do that, we can do the dot product. So the dot product of those two vectors is... Um, 3 times negative 2 plus, you get 42, the dot product of those two vectors is 42. Huh? And then, the other definition of the dot product, which is, I call it the work definition, because it's magnitude times magnitude times cosine of the angle between them. Remember, to find the magnitude of a vector, you just square them up, take the square root. So that one's going to be 5, 
And this one's going to be 144 plus 4, root 148. So 42 equals 5 root 148 cosine C. So the cosine of the angle I'm looking for is this. And then I just type it in, and you should get 46.33 if I did it right. Um, one thing that happened, and I know I talked about this, some of you typed this in wrong. You have to remember if you're going to do the second cosine, which is what you would do, you have to make sure that this is in sub parentheses as well. That denominator has to be in parentheses. Some of you will get error messages and couldn't figure it out because you were typing it in wrong. Not the only way to do it, that's one way. Do it some way that you get that answer, and we're all good. Okay, who else? <laughs> Can we do number uh, one, four? Yep. Quiz question number four is a work problem, so we're going to use the dot product again. And I think it's easier to actually do the problem sort of exactly the same way we did it here. All right, so we have, we got a little picture here. We have a force acting in the direction three comma two. Now, you gotta be careful, kids, because if it's acting in the direction three comma two, right, it looks like that. though, when you build the triangle, if, you're, if you want to know the slope of this vector, which is the same as the tangent, y over x, it's y over x, so it's two-thirds. So the slope of this is two-thirds. Would you agree with that? And then you've got another one that has a slope of Point 0.2. Now, point 0.2 is 2 tenths. So that one looks like this. It has a slope of 2 tenths. One fifth. There's obviously an angle between them. And the work is going to be the magnitude of the first vector, which they tell you is 27 times the magnitude of the second one, which they tell you is 16, times the cosine of the angle in between them. Now, this vector is over three up two, so our first vector is over three up two. Our second vector is over 10 up to, right? So that dot product is 30 plus 4, 34. The other way of doing the dot product is magnitude of the first, which is root 13 times magnitude of the second, which is 104, times the cosine of the angle between them. So 34 equals the square root of 1352 times cosine 3. So your cosine span is 34 over 1.52. Now, with a calculator, you could also approach the problem and say, okay, I need to know this angle. So if I find this one, which is second tangent 2 tenths, 
and I find this one, which is second tangent two thirds. So I can find the angle between by just subtracting, and then I can plug that into my formula too. All right, Stan. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Anything else on this? Papers, anything I've handed back. All right, let's look at our review sheet. Remember, you are responsible for knowing everything that we talk about. Whether it's on the review sheet or not, you've got to know it. And make sure you're looking at your notes and your homeworks and quizzes and all that stuff. Okay. Um, there's a lot on here, and there is no way that you can do it on this sheet. So you're going to just need another sheet of paper, and then you can figure this out. All right. So, has anybody looked at it yet? Of course not. into a polar equation in graphable form. So what does graphable form mean? It means you're going to type it into your calculator. How does it have to look if you're going to type it into your calculator? R equals. So I just need to, before I'm done, I need to make sure that I've solved for R. R equals. Because that's how you put it into the calculator, the graph. All right, so what would you suggest we do here? Um, yeah, that, that'll work. I think what I'll do, though, instead, though, Seth, just because it's easier for me before I do that, I'm going to foil. I think I'll foil first and then make this change. Because it's easier for me to foil with X's and Y's. So x squared plus y squared plus 6y plus 9 equals 9. Well, the 9s are going to disappear, which is good news. Now I'm going to do what Seth suggested and do some changing. But what's this? Well, yeah, but what is it in terms of polar variables? x squared plus y squared is r squared. Guys, 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 over x of y, isn't that r? x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Remember that Pythagorean theorem that we said we were going to talk about? Right? So r squared plus 6y equals 0. Why are you wearing a mask over your eyes? What? Oh, you do have to pull up over your eyes. Okay. Now, the only thing left that I don't want is Y. So, R squared plus 6 R sine equals 0. How do I know that? Because I know that Y equals R sine theta. Now, what do you think we need to do if we want to put that into our calculator? Not just factor it out, we can actually divide it out. Why is that legit? Because we don't want R to be zero. If R is zero, you're at the pole. So what do I have if I do that? R plus 6 sine equals 0. So 
So now I can solve it. R equals negative 6 sine theta. Okay. Number 12, that was interesting to me. <clears throat> we got solve for Z. So what are we going to have to do to solve for Z? Take the square root. So negative 1 plus root 3 to the 5 halves. Square rooting is 1 halfing. Power 1 half. Now what? Colin? Absolutely, we're going to use the mob because the mob works with every power under the sun. It works with fractional powers. It works with negative powers. Any power you want to use it with, you can. But the mob only works if you're in polar form. So, negative one, root three, what's the hypotenuse? What's R? Two. What's the argument? What's the theta in standard position? One twenty. And I'm going to raise that to the 5 halves power. All right, here we go. How does the mob work? Radius to the power. Angle times the power. Answer number one, right there. How many answers does this problem have? Five. Nope. Two. Two. Because roots have multiple answers. The fifth power has one answer. But square root has two. So if you did this problem in two steps, could you raise that to the one-fifth? I mean, raise this to the fifth? Get an answer. But then you gotta turn around and square root it, and that's gonna give you two. The mob allows us to do it all at once, but we're still gonna get two answers. How far apart are those two answers gonna be? 180. Now, notice that if we add 180, we're too big. We're not gonna, oops, we're not gonna use that one, we're gonna use this one. So here are my two answers in polar form. But I think the direction said answer in complex form. Well, that's okay because 300 and 120 are special. Cosine of 300 is one half. So 
x is just going to turn out to be 2 is 2. And then sine 300 is negative root 3 over 2. Ooh, what's that going to be? 4 root 2 times negative root 3 over 2. Negative 2 root 6. Perfect. There you go. There you go. Now, the second one, the second answer, that's our first answer. The second one, I think it's going to have exactly the same numbers because 120 also has a reference angle of 60. This will be negative one half, and this will be positive root three over two. So that answer is negative two root two and positive two root two. This is that was a no calculator problem. That one could have been done on the calculator also, right? And this would have gotten this. Okay, come with questions, because when the questions are done, and I want prepared questions, think ahead.